All right, trying this again with sound hopefully today. Um, I just want to do a quick review of what the actual simple slope formula is. We have done some work on what the equation is, y equals mx plus b, and we talked, um, last time we took notes, on three ways to find slope, that you could use the equation, and that the slope would be in the m place, that you could use ordered pairs or a table, and that's what our focus is going to be today and tomorrow. Um, and you can also use a graph to count and find rise over run. You need to know all three of these ways because often on a test or um, uh, assessment, you're not going to be given choices. You're going to be given some information. So for instance, in this assignment that we did a couple days ago, on the front page, we were practicing finding slope from a graph where you could count. On the next, these problems only have two pairs of um, X, Y pairs of uh, point or what are called points. And we can use those to find our slope. As long as we have two points, we can find our slope. So just a quick review of what slope is. The variable is always M. We often talk about this as rise over run. And that's where it seems simple to be counting on them from a graph, but um, we're gonna try to make that connection today into what that really is. What it really is, the rise, is the vertical change. Vertical change. That means that the rise is the change on the graph on the axis that goes up and down. I've drawn a coordinate graph on my notes here. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So whenever we're talking about vertical change, we are talking about y. And we're talking here particularly about the change in y over the change in x. The change in x is the run, and it is our horizontal change. And it is the change when we're going across the graph on the y axis or the x axis versus the y, which is why we call that the change in x. The formula itself can look pretty confusing. <clears throat> I understand you guys have talked about this in class a little bit. It's m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It really goes back to just this. It's a change in y over the change in x. We're going to use a couple of um, problems with just points, and I'm going to graph them to show you. Um, it can be solved by graphing, but it really is simple to just use this formula as confusing as it initially looks. So let's start with problem one. We're going to find the slope for the two points, 0, 2 and 5, 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. This y2, y1 really just means this is the first xy pair and this is the second xy pair. So this is our x and this is our y and this is our x and this is our y. But to use them in this equation, we would label this as sub 1 and sub 1 because they're from the first and this would be sub 2, and this would be sub 2. So then we would take those and we would subtract them. Why are we subtracting them? Because the formula is finding the change, and the change is the difference, and the difference is subtraction. So we're going to take this second y, and we're going to put it in here. And it's going to say 8 minus 2. I got the 8 from here and the 2 from here. And then I'm going to put my line to show that this is a ratio. And in the denominator space, I'm going to put the x sub 2 and the x sub 1. That would be 5 minus 0. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to subtract. 8 minus 2 is 5. I'm sorry, 
I just said eight minus two is five. Eight minus two is six. I was looking ahead to this five and five minus zero is five. Okay, so our slope here is six over five. What does that mean? It means that if I was gonna graph these two pairs onto this graph and show the slope, it would be six rise and five run. So let's graph them. Zero two is gonna be zero two. And let's label that. And five eight would be five eight. And let's label that. I conveniently have a ruler here. You guys can use the edge of the paper to try to eyeball this. But having really accurate lines on the graph is part of the problem. Human error can make this challenging. All right, and then we're gonna show the rise. And we're gonna show the run. And notice again that the rise is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the run is one, two, three, four, five. And we went through quite a bit of work to graph that and then count to find the same information that we found here just by subtracting. Now, if this x sub 2, y sub 2, all of that stuff confuses you, I just want to show you it really doesn't matter what order they go in. What matters is that you keep your x, y pair together when you put them in the equation. So, for instance, these are lined up above each other and below each other in the um, slope formula because they're part of this ordered pair. And then if we note here, these go here because they were an ordered pair here. So as long as they stay together when you put them in here, it really doesn't matter what order they go in. Um, I'm going to just set this up again and show you that if I put this ordered pair first instead of this one, or if I made this my second pair, whatever, if I reverse these, it still works. So I'm going to put two minus eight over zero minus five. Two minus eight is negative six. Zero minus five is negative five. Negative divided by negative is positive, And I still end up with six over five as my slope. Okay. Um, you're going to spend some time today doing some work on this. Um, you will end up with problems with negatives. And um, I just want to really quickly set up for you what if you had negatives. Let's try the second problem. 5 minus 3 is our ordered pair. And negative 1, 6. So if I set this up as negative, let's set this up as this is my first pair and this is my second and let's use the formula and show that means that this is x sub 1 and y sub 1 and that this is x sub 2 and y sub 2. That would mean that we would do 6 minus because of the formula and then this is a negative 3. So it's going to be a positive three in the equation because I have a negative from the formula and a negative from the number. And then we have negative one. It conveniently goes first, so it gets to stay a negative one because there's no negative in front of it. And notice six, one, negative one, six, negative one, three, which was a negative three, but it's now a positive minus five. Y minus 5 because we're finding the difference and if you look there that means that we have to subtract this was a positive so it's going to go behind that all right we get 6 plus 3 is equal to 9 
and negative 1 minus 5 is equal to negative 6. So this one ends up being negative 9 over 6, which can be reduced to negative 3 over 2. Let's just see if that plays out if I graph that on here. So 5, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 5, negative 3. Let's label that 5, negative 3. And the second pair is negative 1 and 6. You can see how these two points are pretty far apart. <clears throat> When I connect these these two points to make this line, I'm getting a negative slope, which makes sense because we found that the slope was negative three over two. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you again why it can be a challenge to count. We've, we're gonna go up to this point here. So up. For a rise, over for a run, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the run is six. So we're showing in this case that the slope is negative nine over six, which also still has to be reduced to negative three over two. Um, Mistakes can happen when they're this far apart on a graph because we can count wrong. But if we're doing the calculations, um, we might make slight errors in our arithmetic or our division or whatever else we're doing here. Um, but these are two different ways and we can use them actually to check our work. So if you like doing the counting, I can understand that. But I really want you to practice and get used to using the slope formula because it really is quicker, especially when you're doing it on a test, um, to just calculate the difference between those two points. Okay, I really hope this helps and uh, keep practicing.